One, two, three. I actually like to start with um, like a background color. Okay. So I'm gonna fill that in while we talk about what I'm gonna draw. I am the artiste. I am Lawrence Gulo. I put out a Twitter poll that literally a whole dozen people responded to, uh, upwards of a whole dozen, about what I should draw during this session. And helping me today is Iris Explosion. Hi, I am here to provide the goofs. Keep me talking so I don't just <laughs> zone out into like drawing zen. I got places to be. I got I got I cats. Know. I got cats to snuggle. I've got I've got cats to feed. They're gonna eat my whole house if I don't come home in time. Uh, considering that you live in a big apartment building in New York, that's gonna take some doing. But I feel I like your cats there's, could do it. Oh, there's so much lead in the paint as well because it's yeah. quite an old building. So I don't wanna I don't well, wanna tempt them. We have to get you home to your children. So uh, what are we? What are you drawing first? So the winner of the Twitter poll was um, retro cartoons, awesome. which I gave as uh, either the last unicorn or. Jam and the Holograms. Okay. I don't know which one of those you're more familiar with or more passionate about. I have to say, if I had to choose something that I'm like more familiar with from my childhood, I was more Last Unicorn than Jem. Yeah. I think Jem was a little before my time. I would say my connection to Jem is more recent and more and less sober. Yeah, there's only so much like incredibly uh, economic animation that I can take. You know? Yeah, there, it's but it's very colorful. Yeah, and they dress as mermaids sometimes. And which... I like, I like that it's about girls and there's like hitting, like it's, <laughs> it's quite violent, <laughs> but not action hero violent. Like, oh no, we're, you know, we're we're actually in the music industry, but we will also just straight up slap each other. I guess for me, Sailor Moon really filled that niche where it's like we fight with love, but by fighting with love, I mean we're gonna hit you literally in the face with a bunch of hearts. <laughs> um, yeah. And that's a great kind of love fighting. I feel like we need more like lasers to the face and be like, this is for truth and justice, but yeah. it's also a laser in your face. Well, I think that's the embodiment of the road to a tolerant society is to be intolerant of intolerance. Yeah. Right? So if someone's not being loving of their fellow human being, you, sometimes you got to break out the fists. I mean, look at what we've got here. Like, we have a beautiful unicorn, a magical, mythical creature that symbolizes purity, but it's got a, that's a very sharp horn you've drawn. My first um, encounter with unicorn lore was, you know, the unicorn tapestries mm. and the unicorn is just doing its job, which is purifying a fountain, I think. Mm -hmm. The horn has non-lethal uses as well, but it can also go, you know, muscle deep in a, in a hound if it needs to, or some, hun <laughs> or some hunters. Totally. We were talking in our other recording about Schmendrick. Yes. I've been drawing Schmendrick since I was, like, very wee. Yeah, he's, um, like, your favorite character. Because character. I love him. And he's, like, to me, I, I, I kind of trace my... Um, idea of what good masculinity is mm. to that character. What I like about him is that he is not in any way dashing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's not a romantic lead. Yeah. Um, I always found it when I watched the movie as a kid and like I say this in a very particular way that like unlike most male movie protagonists there's something very unappealing about him. Yes. And I like and it's like more interesting than sort of the Prince Eric blandly handsome Yes. Um, guy. And if you're used to Disney heroes from that time, they hardly even say anything. Yeah. And and he's speaking throughout the whole film. He's not the romantic lead, but he helps the protagonist, who is a woman, mm -hmm. um, throughout her journey. And it's like, it's her kind of self-discovery journey mm -hmm. that he assists her with, but he doesn't, he never like saves her from anything. He tries, but he doesn't really. He tries. He tries. Bless his heart. And like ultimately he's incredibly wise. He's got some of the best dialogue in the in the film and, yeah. and in the book. Like she asks him or she asks him if he's happy and he says, Men don't always know when they're happy, but I think so. Aww. And I, I love that so much. And I also like, of course, there are no happy endings because nothing ends. Wow. I feel like like now is a great time for like 
a funny wisecrack, but like no, that's like super deep, and it's, I like that's really it's lovely. So be like I. This is why it remains one of my favorite things, even though it's a very goofy film. Oh God, yeah, that. <laughs> oh boy, that tree woman, huh? I think I can kind of trace any kind of feeling of sexual discomfort <laughs> to that tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that tree kind of weirded out a generation, huh? It's very disturbing. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, they'd never think that was appropriate for kids. Like, I don't think it's un- inappropriate, but, like, children are already, like, they have an idea of what sexuality is, right? Yeah. And We're getting deep. And, and I, I, I feel like I was experiencing sexual discomfort at a very young age, like, before I really knew what sex was about, from, like, disturbing images, Sure. Of, of, like, bodies and, like, someone being affectionate towards you when you don't want them to be affectionate towards you. Yeah. Which kids experience all the time. Yeah. Sorry, that is getting very, Yeah, this like, is get getting serious. super... I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. I'm just, like, I'm gauging, like, okay, I have been brought in here to do a job. And I worry that I'm not doing it super well right I'm now. I'm so sorry. No, it's, I mean, hey, this is your thing, like... The Last Unicorn is, like, it's very... It's, it's very serious to me. It's a very meaningful <laughs> movie. I mean, hey, like Molly Gru's monologue about, you know, like, like where were you, like, you know, where were you when I was a virgin and still pure and now yes. I'm this. And it's like that that kills me every time. Yeah. I cry every and time that, I watch that. We're talking about sexual discomfort and how that's like kind of inappropriate to show kids. That that concept of feeling like your purity is gone and your innocence is gone and your too old for something that you've waited your whole life for is so real and mm-hmm. also very disturbing for a kid to, to confront. Yeah. yeah. Or even just to, to, to sort of approach that again as an adult. It stuck with me for so long. Um, like, it is the kind of movie that really sticks with you. Oh, my gosh, look at this. You have, you've made a man. <laughs> it's kind of looking a little bit Slavic here, but that's okay. That's okay. There were, like, traveling, you know... Jewish magicians in the Slavic area. Yeah. That's totally valid. To me, he, going back to him kind of representing good masculinity, mm-hmm. I kind of felt like he was a good thing to aspire to. That, that yeah. like, you know, you have, you're always working to improve yourself. Yeah. Not really afraid to be incredibly vulnerable. Yeah. We need- uh, and to make mistakes. Yeah. I mean, we need more of that. I feel like masculinity is sort of encouraged to be like, you know, you got to take it like a man, like you have to, you know, you can't show weakness, you can't cry, you can't, like you have to either stoically take something or fight back against it. But Schmendrick kind of, he kind of fucked up a lot, but. Yeah, and, and he's, talk about like not being the romantic lead, even though he's the leading male and he's the constant companion of the female lead. Mm-hmm. He's not even allowed to touch her. Yeah. He touches her by accident once and then immediately apologizes. What a nice example. Mm-hmm. We need more of this. Yes. Yeah. Right? We need more of this in everything. Let me put some color on it. Yeah, color it. Yeah, yeah. This is a program, by the way, called Procreate. Really? Which is like a little bit of a naughty I was going to say, do they know <laughs> that? Do they say it out loud? I'm sure. I'm sure Im- they knew. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I mean, I can't imagine why they wouldn't. And I guess, like we, you know, you just made this beautiful baby. Like this, this was born from your pen, um, which you know looks like a peen, in a way. The peen is mightier than the sween. Uh, well- <laughs> <laughs> I thought that would get you. Nope. Yeah, you got it. You got me. <laughs> You did it. That's your sense of That's, humor. Yeah, I like words that said said weird. <laughs> <laughs> Me in the swing. Uh, yeah, give that boy some shadow. Uh, I was just gonna talk more about Schmendrick, but now I'm embarrassed. <laughs> no, why? No. <laughs> so in the book, uh huh, Schmendrick has a little bit more of like a backstory. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if I'll get all of this entirely right, but basically when he was young and practicing magic one of his teachers was like you are so terrible at magic and you're never gonna learn to like do real magic in just one lifetime so I'm going to put a curse on you that you won't age until you've mastered magic oh so he is actually a lot older than he looks Mm -hmm. and he's just kind of like been stuck at whatever age he's supposed to look like 
on this personal quest to master magic, but once he masters magic, he's no longer immortal, mm. which is very interesting. And, like, not touched on in the film, and that's fine, because it mm-hmm. really is more of the unicorn story, and that's cool. Mm-hmm. But a little bit of it remains, like, I think he still introduces himself as saying that he's older than he looks. Mm. And he's supposed to look significantly younger than Molly, but they still kind of end up together, mm. which is also really interesting. I'm glad she ends up with a nice boy. <laughs> yeah. And she, gets, she, she gets to meet a unicorn. Yeah. I definitely was in a Last Unicorn themed burlesque show. That's true, you were. So, I remember seeing pictures, though, to tell our listeners at home uh, who you were for that because it um, was great. Oh, I just did a boy version of L- Lady Amalthea. I know, <laughs> and you looked so good. It, it did look good. It, I, have, I have to admit, it was a very good cast. Um, yeah, sadly, the, the role of Schmendrick was taken by very good performer, Bastard Keith. Oh, well, geez, yeah. Um, and I was like, well, it's only fair that, like, an actual Jew gets to play. <laughs> fair enough. I, I relinquished it gladly because he's great. Mm-hmm. This is like whenever I watch people draw, like, this is always, to me, like, such a crazy part is like, and now I put in the shadows, and it's like, well, how did how did you know? <laughs> <laughs> Look at these shadows go, making dimensions, creating space and light. I'm still figuring that out. I, I think in very 2D terms. You're very like much a comic book artist sometimes. Yeah. Like, you have that feel, but I don't know. This is layers. Yeah, this I'm trying depth. I'm trying harder to do more like painterly effects now that I have these very nice like brushes and I have this brush set for Photoshop that is incredible it's by a guy called kyle webster Mm. who's an illustrator and he designs brushes for photoshop so that you can do these really authentic painterly things on photoshop and the these on procreate are very decent Mm. but his brushes are just so amazing like real looking watercolors that like blend into each other and this message has been brought to you by... <laughs> I don't mind giving that Kyle guy. Webster a shout out. He's great. Kyle Webster. <laughs> we expect our royalty check in the mail. Kyle, give, give me some of your manga brushes. <laughs> <laughs> These days I feel like I don't... Like if, if I'm at like a meeting or something, I don't doodle anime girls so much anymore. Mostly because like... I worry about people looking over my shoulder. Mm. Um, but I do a lot of rupees, like from Zelda. I don't know. There's something very satisfying. They're very geometric. I don't know. There's something about that shape that's just really fun mm-hmm. to make. And I like crystals in general. So I don't know. I've been thinking about like getting tattoos of rupees somewhere. Yeah. Um, it's a good conversation starter that I have inked uh, permanently on my body forever. Mm-hmm. Um, which is a perfectly fine thing. Um, I mean, my that's on my wrist. My other wrist tattoo is yes and, which is the first rule of improv theater. And that's great, but it also means I can never take an improv class ever again uh, because I would then be that guy with the yes and tattoo. And I don't really want to be that guy with the yes mm-hmm. and tattoo. My tattoos are conversation stoppers. Oh, no. People ask me, oh. I love what's... your tattoos. Yeah, but my tattoo... Like, the one on my forearm, mm-hmm. people will say, oh, who's that? Is it, <laughs> is it Julius Caesar? Oh. And, I'm like, and I'm like, no, it's my favorite Roman emperor, El Gabalus. He <laughs> was on the throne for only four years, so you probably don't know who he is. Um, oh, of not course. Not trying to say you're dumb, but... <laughs> that guy, he's and my they're like, third favorite yeah, Roman and emperor. And the conversation stops. It's really funny. Oh. They're, just, they're just like, oh, right. But he did some crazy stuff. He did. He was a champion. Yeah. Didn't he, like, drown people in flower petals or something? Yeah, there's, um... See, I, know, I know who yeah. he is, probably because you've told me stuff about him. Cause Maybe, like, yeah. but there's a, there's a very famous painting of that mm. happening. A lot of, especially the disgraced Roman emperors, a lot of the lore about them may have been written by people after they were disgraced just to, like, shit talk them. Mm. Which is really just as valid a source of history as a lot of other things. But I can see where somebody being like, hey, sweet ink bro, um, is not like, doesn't necess- they don't want that to conversation and necessarily exactly. lead to like a history they want, lesson. They want to know a name and they want to recognize the name and mm-hmm. be like, oh, cool. But that, that does not happen. I say, it's my favorite Roman emperor. And they're like, you're a nerd, bye. Oh my gosh. 
these highlights. I decided to give him an undershirt. I like this furry collar thing, this like shoulder shrug that you've made. It's yeah, well, he's got that in the cartoon, I think. Oh yeah, I suppose it's at to like we've been talking about it, and to be honest, it's been a while. Yeah. I would have like watched this in preparation, I, I am, but I, I'm, you know, I'm certain that it's more imprinted on my memory than yours. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've so it's totally understandable you don't don't remember what the shoulders of the characters look like. I I bowed to your last <laughs> unicorn like you have outnerded me here. That wasn't a well actually. No, no, no. no. I was just saying it's <laughs> understandable. <laughs> I mean, I know the politics of like a man telling a woman is like like that he knows more about a thing is complicated I was and not trying to one up you. No, no, I know. <laughs> Excuse me, but the shoulders of Smendrick the oh, Wizard oh and the Lord. Last Unicorn oh, uh, are actually furred. Um, you should maybe go back and watch it, m'lady. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I concede. You are a bigger fan of The Last Unicorn than I am. Also, I didn't know that that, that was what we'd be, well, we'd, what you'd be drawing. No, we, I contributed, um, but like what we'd be drawing today, otherwise I would have boned up on it as it were but um <laughs> excuse well actually excuse me i've never seen anyone like well actually the last unicorn except for me of course yeah i know <laughs> clearly it, it does make me want to throw up a little bit <laughs> i mean sometimes like being a woman in like nerd spaces i get very defensive because i feel like sometimes i have to kind of prove my nerd cred in order to be there sure um but like you're my friend i've known you yeah, for a while i, I like, would I hope i don't make you feel like that if i, I ever do i am f fully prepared to be told off no 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 you're fine um Spex that nose <laughs> <laughs> yeah get that nose Get Shrendrick's nose in gear. Good nose. It's a very important nose. That's such a good nose. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I think this one's done. I like it. Should I should I do one? Yeah. I'm gonna draw what I feel. Yeah. What kind of tool you want? Um, the kind of tools you got, baby. Oof, my. Uh. <laughs> How about I really like the these like turpentine ones. Okay, here we go. All right, Iris does a drawing. Let's just get some anime girl flavor in here. Oh yeah. You know, the thing about The Last Unicorn that everyone feels like is that it should be more anime. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Like I say that like, you know, it's very Clamp inspired, but in a way like Clamp taught me how to do winged eyeliner. Oh yeah, for sure. He's kind of a sad boy. I, of course, have ingested everything that Peter S. Beagle has ever said about The Last Unicorn. And um, <laughs> apparently the animator who designed the Red Bull is this, like, Japanese char Person. character designer legend who only goes by, like, one name, like Madonna or Cher. Oh, wow. Yeah. He has, like, a pointy hat. Mm-hmm. I didn't make enough room. I should have started him lower down. His I'm also convinced, and I will say this here, I will say this on here in front of in front of the dozens of people who will be watching. Dozens of them. That uh, I think that Wurt's costume in Over the Garden Wall is definitely inspired by Schmendrick of The Last Unicorn. Look at this beautiful anime boy. Don't you just look at this, look at this sad anime boy yeah. I have made for you. There we go. I didn't yeah. give him ears. Now he has That's some very ears. good. Thank you. Here's my sad boy. Very good. Yep. I like sad boys. Thank you. I mean, me too, I guess. All right, I'm done. That's it. That's all I got. Good job. Thank you. Check class. Yeah. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank God. A passing grade. 